Part one of the Explore Mango neck build here. It's a little bit of a wave after I cut the neck blank out. Let it sit for a couple days, but we need to do some straightening. So we took this over to the joiner, made a couple passes on the joiner. And what I noticed as I was doing this, that this wood tends to tear out a lot. So instead of actually a clean cut, I'm getting a lot of tears. So I know I got to do a lot more sanding and be careful as I'm routing. This is not really a straight grain piece of wood that's easy to route. It's a little bit messy. So we'll go ahead and sand each side of this as well. See how flat I can get it. And as I was sanding it, I realized I'm going to have to split it and put another piece in the middle. So I got some more palm wood in that quarter inch thickness and I'm going to glue a center strip down the middle here and widen it and then strengthen it as well. So we'll go through, feed this through on my Laguna 16 inch HD bandsaw. Just a slow cut. And then after we cut it, we'll take it back over to the drum sander and smooth it all out. We'll make a first pass and then we'll go ahead and do a second and third pass as well. I'm not going to show you all of that because you'll get sick from the back and forth on the GoPro. I try and stabilize all these videos so that you guys don't get sick. And moving forward, I won't be wearing the GoPro as much. Palm wood has a lot of oil in it, and what we need to do is break it down slightly so the glue adheres a little better. So we'll take some acetone, wipe down both sides, see how this fits, get some wood glue, make sure that the fretboard is going to fit on the neck. And we went ahead and glued it, and I glued this on my other table that's a little bit further out into the basement. Used a bunch of clamps, clamp it down, make sure it's straight. And then once we get it all set, we'll run it through the joiner once more and get that edge nice and clean. And you can already see the figure in this wood is pretty outstanding. When, you, when I flipped it back, got some really great coloring. So we'll go ahead and lay out the neck. And we're going to lay this out twice. First time is to sort of rough it where I'm going to cut the 17 degree headstock angle and then once I cut it I'm going to come back and relay it out again kind of measure twice cut once and then after that cut I want to make sure it's looking good we'll grab the truss rod and lay it out again making sure you're measuring twice and only cutting once make sure that width looks right and where the end of the truss rod is going to be and I've got my DeWalt 621 router with a fence. And this is just a different setup. You guys have seen my router on rails, and that's not going to work for this. That's a little bit too tall. We'll go ahead and set this up, test it out. Since I've sanded it on both sides, it's pretty flat. And this should be relatively easy and quick. So I'm making some final adjustments for the depth. Clamp this down to the table. We'll turn the router on. Make sure it's plugged in. And when I do the channel, I'll make three passes. First pass is, oh, maybe an eighth. Second pass is an eighth. Maybe a little bit more. And the depth of that truss rod, I think, is about three eighths. We'll just go back and forth, hold it steady. And this actually worked out really nice. It's a nice fence, nice router. The weight sits really good on that skinny neck blank. And you just go slow back and forth, lower the bit, hold it steady, and you're done. I'll make one adjustment where the Allen hex is. And then I'm going to freehand this cut on my bandsaw. So I've got that 17-degree 17, 17 headstock, and I've got a three-quarter inch blade on the bandsaw. 
and we're just going to make that cut nice and slow, follow that line, and then we'll take it back over to the joiner and get it flat. So the trick is to line it up and go slow. I had a Craftsman sliding table saw that I was using for a couple of years and just wasn't getting enough out of that tool to justify the space it took up in the shop. So I sold that when I was in Nashville and we'll go ahead and make two passes on this. And again, the trick is to go slow, hold it steady against the fence and you'll get a perfect, nice cut doing it this way. Takes a little bit of practice, but then I don't need another tool and sort of a wasted space in my shop. So just double checking it and it's looking good. So here we'll come back and relay out the neck now that I've got it all finalized. Double check the nut width, which is about 3 16 So line that up. Use that Veritas saddle square, which is probably one of my better tools in the shop. It takes 90 degrees down two sides, which is really handy in laying out the guitar. So we'll draw out the thickness of the neck. I'm going for the 59 profile, maybe 58, slightly thicker. There's where we gotta clean up the Allen wrench slot just is a little bit thicker. You don't need the route the whole thickness. A lot of guys have asked me if I wrap my truss rod in saran wrap or anything like that, and I don't. Usually if I just put a little bit of tightness on it, uh, it ends up pretty good. It doesn't rattle on the channel. I hate putting silicone in there. That's like one more thing you don't want to introduce into the guitar neck. I know I've seen repairs where they pump that stuff in and not a big fan. We'll freehand cut this then on the bandsaw and we'll clean it up later with my router. We'll cut off the back side here. Here you can do this freehand. Nothing really too hard of it. Just go slow, make the right cuts, and you trim off all that waste. And I'll reuse that waste for some other pieces. So then we're going to put a volute on the headstock. I think that's one of the Gibson's big mistakes is not keeping this volute. I know some guys hate it, but it always adds just a little bit of strength. So we'll take this to the rigid oscillating spindle sander. I think I'm responsible for selling a whole ton of these. Probably one of the best luthier tools out there. Perfect size. I have two. I have one for the belt and one with the spindle. And then we'll sand the heels while well, I didn't film that. We'll finish cutting off the tenon, roughing it out. Then we're gonna glue that extra piece I cut to the neck. Headstock is a goofy size, so we're just gonna take the waist and bring it over, and we'll have a nice palm wood stripe in there. A Little bit unique. Cut it, glue it on, clamp it down. So there's a little bit of an edge on the bottom and then the top needs another piece. I didn't film all that there. So we'll use the double stick tape, tape this on, cut off the excess, and then trim it on the router upstairs. And here as I'm routing, I can tell this palm wood is a little bit fussy. It likes to rip out. Kind of my first experience routing with it and a little bit of a pain and I'll show you that coming up here in a second. I actually used some super glue here because I can see it's just not doing what I want it to do. We'll double check the angle of the neck and the body, make sure we're doing it right, and then I've got this fancy jig here that I gotta do another video on. And it clamps to my bench and it holds the neck tenon up and I can put a four degree wedge in there and then get a perfect cut on both sides. This is one of the things everyone struggles with. So you can see I've got it clamped to the side, clamped down, and I can make perfect cuts. I've got a Japanese saw and we're just pulling through and making the cut right exactly where we need it to be. 
I think this is one of the videos you guys will want me to do a follow-up on a little bit slower but I've been using this jig for years and I think this is probably one of my better ideas uh, for cutting the tenon on a neck especially if you're doing it freehand not on a table saw we're then going to chisel off a little bit of the ends get the glue a little bit of space to move I showed you guys that in the other video but we clean up the sides just a little bit so you've got a little bit of room to move you got too much tightness the glue and the neck are not going to fit right so we leave a little bit of room for some expansion of the joint and where the glue can sit got some double stick tape we're going to cut the taper then on the neck I still like my double stick tape method I'm not going to the super glue tape that you guys have seen we'll clamp this down bring this back upstairs got my long inch bit and we'll make sure the tenon is cut right and the taper is cut right we'll then take this over to the pin router and just flatten off the back of the neck so that it's nice and level a couple passes and I've got a perfectly flat back edge of the neck a couple more adjustments here This is one of those crucial tips to make sure the neck sits correctly. Like I said in that last video, if it's too tight, you'll never get it down and you'll have a huge problem. And this one was pretty tight and when I added glue, you'll see coming up, um, it was a little bit scary. We're going to resaw that palm wood for a headstock plate and working pa with palm wood at this point is becoming really difficult the stuff has got a lot of silica in it and it's killing my bits it's killing my saw and just realized it wasn't a great idea couldn't find a piece wide enough to fit the grain pattern I was looking for so we're gonna glue it and then we're gonna take a piece and fold it back it's looking pretty good we're gonna just sand and clean it up Routing is a bad idea, getting way too much splintering off of it. Again, we'll just clean it up off the spindle sander, make sure it's looking good. File the tenon down just a little bit. I was playing around with it and it was a little bit too tight and you can see the fretboard is sitting there. We'll move to that next and I'll show you how I make the fretboard. Thanks for watching guys. We will come back with the fretboard and show you where that starts.